Hello everyone, this is Daniel, aka B-Belt Dan, and welcome to episode 8 of where I am building a Skeksis puppet. Now to start this episode, I'm going to kind of take a little bit of a, of a moment and kind of, you know, talk about the details of this project and some of the challenges that it has been offering me. When I started doing this project, I did not have any set plan on how I was going to do everything. I didn't sit down and sketch out designs or blueprints or anything and decide, well, this is how I'm going to do this, this is how I'm going to do that. I just kind of had a general idea, a rough idea of what I want to do and only a vague knowledge of how I'm going to do it. From that point on, it's all been kind of me just experimenting, uh, trying out things, uh, you know, expanding my knowledge, doing the research, all these kind of things to try to get the exact look or the exact uh, results that I've been wanting. With that being said, sometimes I have to take a couple of steps back in order to move forward. You know, I end up going one particular route and then find out that route's not working, so I have to stop, redo some things, or maybe even, in one case so far, I had to do it with the skull, rebuild a bunch of things in order for me to move forward because the results or the looks or the styles or whatever was not quite going the way that I was wanting it to. And I recently had to have done that. And that is mostly surrounding the jaw. Now when I originally started doing this, I decided that the jaw was going to be cable operated as well as the neck, you know, with the rest of the puppet. So there would be no hands inside the puppet. But after a while and with some you know, suggestions from some of y'all that have been watching, I've made the decision that I also want to have it to where it can be hand operated as well. You can have your hand up into the neck and use your hand to operate the, uh, the mouth. The problem is, is that when I originally designed this, I did not have that in mind. So I've tried to do a bunch of things to try to get the original design to work to where I can operate it with my hand uh, at first, I was trying it to where it would be traditional, but the amount of space that I would have to hide, so to say, to fit this top portion of my hand here, yeah, there's the puppet right there, and my hand here into the puppet head uh, underneath the mouth, because there was no way to get inside the actual head cavity to hide the hand, uh, it just wasn't looking right. I tried different things, it just wasn't looking right. So I tried a couple of other different things, but nothing was really working. So I end up having to bite the bullet and kind of taking a leap of faith and a risk and actually kind of tear up the head that I have so far in the hopes that I could probably come up with some solution. And I finally have done that after uh, some several hours of trying to work on this and so what I have here is so far right now what for the most part is going to be the finalized skull of the puppet. Now this is just the uh, jaw that is going to be hand operated. I've had to cut a hole down here in the bottom as you can probably see. And this is what I was really worried about because I was worried what would this do with the structural integrity. Oh hi Griff with the structural integrity of the rest of the skull, but so far it doesn't seem like it's doing that bad of a job. Uh, so I'm kind of happy with it. And this now allows me to where I can go ahead and put my hand into here, and now I can operate the mouth accordingly with using my hand and use the rest of it to move the head around. And uh, so, with this, I think this actually works. This was probably the best solution that I was able to come up with. I say the best solution because there is a bit of a catch in that I have to operate this a slightly different, more of an orthodox manner. Because usually when you have to use a puppet, you operate it like this. My solution is, is that now I do it this way. I have my two fingers go into the skull this way right here and these two fingers go into the mouth and then I just lower the two fingers like this and that moves the lower jaw. And 
I had to tuck my thumb into the side right here, as you can probably see, so it's kind of out of the way. But this actually works. It's I'm very happy with it. I thought that maybe it would be very difficult to try to puppeteer the puppet in such a way to where, um, you know, because it's almost backwards to a certain degree. But after a while, I mean, I've picked it up real well to where when I talk, I'm able to move my fingers accordingly to where the mouth opens up. Uh, still need to kind of work a little bit on the puppet work here, but uh, but yeah. Now this does still remove, it is still removable, so I can simply slide this piece out and down, maybe, yes, there we go, to remove this jaw right here to go ahead and put on the old jaw, which this jaw I'm going to utilize as the cable operated jaw. So I'll be able to slap that in. My dog is wanting something. So that tap, 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 tap in the chair. That's my dog walking around. Um, so I can still slap this on here. And this is going to be modified to where this right here is going to be the cable operated one. So I could still do that. Now I'm going to go ahead right now and move on to, uh, you know, putting the muscle or the foam on this and make the teeth and the new upper jaw. And then from there, uh, I'll cut back, show you what that looks like, and then we'll go ahead and get started with the next part, which is what I'm sure you all have been waiting for, and that is actually putting the skin on the puppet. Okay, and so here I am with the newly completed brand new jaw. It has the brand new teeth on it, as you can see here. I went with a more irregular pattern. This was, once again, the design that my wife recommended that I go ahead and do. And I actually think it looks a lot better right there. This side right here is completely normal, but this side right here, as you can see, I kind of have it to where, well, part of this is going to be missing because it's actually metal now. And there's even some broken teeth right here. So this kind of gives character, you know, to this particular Skeksis because um, I've mentioned this before in my 3D modeling videos is that they, I oops, there's a fly in here Okay, so there's a cameo by a fly um, I've mentioned in my 3D videos that while I'm building something or designing something I like to try to you know come up with the character or the backstory behind what it is that I'm building It's the same thing with this particular type of Skeksis here is I want to come up with the backstory and so far the backstory that I've we've come up with so far is that um, you know, it's it's hint, heavily hinted at in the original Dark Crystal that there were a lot more Skeksis than what we see by the time we see the, the you know, the f final Dark Crystal and the end of the Skeksis. Spoiler alert. So there were other Skeksis around, so what would they be like? What would they look like? And they all had their jobs. And this one right here, he was the one, he was kind of like the, the general, the soldier. You know, he was the one that was originally in charge of those bug-like things and stuff like that so he's seen a lot of battle he didn't stay inside the you know inside the uh the the castle he would actually go out and do things um uh, so you know and he's shot he you know had a lot of body damage uh you know uh to show for so that's kind of his little story that we're kind of uh, going with here. So, all right, everybody, just to jump in real quick, once I got done filming all of this particular section of this particular episode, I actually, while scrolling and looking at some pictures of Skeksis, I just found out that Netflix a while back ago released a more decent trailer to Age of Resistance, which gives us a little bit more insight to the story coming up and yes it does indeed all confirm what i just mentioned as far as the character that i'm designing here to where there was more skexies in fact they even show that there's even some of them that are actually leaving the castle going out and doing things on their own i think there's one where there's he's dual wielding two swords look like he's about ready to fight one of the gelflings or something or a bunch of gelflings or what have you so they kind of kind of confirms what I speculated, which is what I'm basing this character off of. Of course, this character is not going to be in the actual show. At least he better not, or something mysterious is happening. But anyways, just want to let you know, so if y'all haven't caught that, 
go to Netflix or probably you'll be able to find it on YouTube. Check out the new trailer. It's pretty awesome. With this all completed, and once again, this is detachable. Now it's time to go ahead and start skinning it. What I went ahead and done first is I've cut little patches out of all the materials that I'm going to be using. As I go through and I try these pieces of, lay these pieces, you know, in areas where I think that they should go, like uh, this right here would probably be pretty good for the, um, you know, for the, the beak. And then this right here would be good for around the eyes, this material right there, and this material so it would be good for like little transitional pieces here and there. So I try to figure out where I want to put these at. Now I got to start cutting out these, you know, the, the pieces of material that's going to be going on this. But I don't want to just start cutting willy-nilly and slapping it on. I want to make a pattern. Now how I'm going to do that is I'm going to use some masking tape. Now there's a lot of tutorials online on how to do this. I want to give you all the real quick version is that you just simply just take some masking tape and you start to place it onto the areas that you're wanting to make your pattern. Such as, let's say I just want to go ahead and kind of make a pattern of this area right here. For example, I just go ahead and move this, put this on and just get another piece and just cover the whole area like so. So you cover the whole area and then you just simply just take it off and you have your pattern. I'm going to go back and do this one, but I've already went ahead and just like a cooking show, got one already prepared. So I've already went ahead and done these right here. This right here is where this area is at for the eye. So as you can see here, and remember that's going to be actually this material right there, so the eye right there. And this piece here is going to be this little crest piece right there. And that material is more than likely probably going to be uh, this material. No, actually, that's going to be this material here. So I'm cutting out the areas where I'm going to be using this material. So that's going to be right there. I'm going to work with this and ply this first and then work with the other pieces. So once I get this, I'm not going to use this. This is just kind of a temporary pattern. What I'm going to do next is I'm going to go ahead and take one of these patterns here and I'm going to take some uh, paper. This right here is some thick uh, like wrapping paper you can find at the store. Place this down onto the piece of paper like so. Use my uh, Sharpie pen, anything that you have available, and go ahead and start tracing this out onto this paper because this is going to be my, what I'm actually going to use as my finish uh, pattern. Now, what I want to do here though, is because on this particular type of material, now different materials, I might do this a different way. But on this particular material, I said that I want this to be kind of, like this is the skin that he has, it's going to show a lot more of the age, so it's going to be, so there's going to be areas that I'm going to just very slightly just kind of just pinch it like that to just try to get, you know, definition of, or, you know, crow's feet, uh -huh. mm -hmm. crow, yeah. And, uh, you know, other wrinkles and stuff like that. So I'm going to need a bigger piece of material. So as I go around this, I'm actually going to give myself a bit of an edge to work with for that. Plus, I also always, always want to cut out more because it's easier to take out when I'm putting this on than to try to add back on. So I want to give myself a little bit of allowance. I'm going to trace around this. And I'm giving myself about a half an inch all the way around. I think that should be more than enough because the wrinkles aren't going to be terribly big. So I just go all the way around. And normally, if this was to be sewed, you would want to have this seam allowance already. But we're not sewing any of these pieces together. We're going to glue it directly onto the Skeksis itself, to the Skeksis head. So you just go around and don't forget to lift this up if you can and also draw out the eyeball and once you're done with that once again just like a cooking show already got something prepared so now we have 
these right here. These are the two finished pieces. I'm going to go ahead and mark these. I'm uh, pretty sure I'm going to be able to know because I'm going to almost do an exact uh, transfer over. But I'm going to go ahead and um, I socket and center crest. And this goes towards the back where we're going to all eventually have foam that's going to cover all of this. So from there, now I can go ahead and take these two material or take these two patterns and any other patterns that I have and go ahead and trace those out onto the material, cut it out, and go ahead and start applying. So let me go ahead and do that. And I want to do some experimentation first before I show you on camera how that's going to be done. And then I'll be back. All right, everyone. And as you can see here, I got this area done and I think it turned out very well. Granted, I'm not getting a lot of the details that you may expect if I was to, you know, do it the more traditional way and sculpt this entire thing out, like in clay or what have you, and cast a, um, you know, a foam latex outside skin to cover all of this. That would have been the best, you know, the most detailed, but this is more readily accessible, it's cheaper, and that's what I'm trying to go for. But I think I actually gotten some pretty good looks, and the eye mechanism uh, still works. As we can see right, whoops, let me go ahead and put this down. As we can see right there, there we go. All right, but yeah, I think from that, it's kind of a, definitely a proof of concept. I mean, it really turned out very well. I don't know if y'all can probably see here. I'll zoom the camera in a little bit. Okay, closer look. Hopefully this works a little bit better. Uh, as you can see, this is what I was mentioning to where I know this material you know, it already has, you know, a very consistent, obvious pattern, floral pattern inside it. But once you started putting it in the wrinkles and things, it kind of hides it. I mean, you still have the hint that there is a pattern there. And I think that the Skeksis or some of the Skeksis would have the pattern, very similar to what we see the Mystics that they have, because they were the same species. So there might be some bleeding off between the two of them. And, but I mean, it kind of hides it in. In fact, in some of the areas, it actually kind of gives it, the texture actually gives more detail to the character itself. So I think it works out very well. All I did was to get this look is I took the uh, flat material and I coated the entire side, one side of it, completely with uh, contact cement and then let that dry. And then I just started kind of pinching it off you know, in the places just to get that, uh, that, you know, the wrinkles and everything that you see here. And then once I was done with that and I was happy with it, I also applied contact cement onto the skull itself and just merged the two pieces together. And here we go. So with that, I just need to work on the other side, put the other uh, piece. I actually, actually, I might wait to put this crest piece on until I get the foam figured out back here uh, but I can go ahead and put the other piece on and maybe I can go ahead and use that masking tape effect to go ahead and uh, work on some of the additional areas uh, we'll see what happens but let me go ahead and work on this and when I cut back in I should have both sides done and I think we'll call that the end of the episode all right yeah, well everybody uh, what do y'all think so, you know, I think it's actually starting to look like something. So, yeah, this is kind of how the skinning is going to go on this Skeksis using the material. As I showed you earlier, you can definitely once again see about how just adding in some of those wrinkles into it not only gives it a lot more character, because if I just laid it in flat, it would just look more like it's a mask. It would look like it's a material. But by putting in those wrinkles and putting it in, it actually gives the gives a character. You can actually almost kind of see the age of the character coming through. Uh, as I said before, this I'm actually letting this Skeksis tell me what it wants to look like as I'm building it. You know, I'm not trying to go with anything and, you know, the material is definitely one of those things. As I put the material on, I end up finding out that it's kind of really telling me what it's looking like. So from this, I'm getting ideas of where I can go to from here for the beak, for the, the rest of the top of the head, the neck, and everything. So with that being said, I'm going to go ahead and stop here because, uh, you know, 
one, I want to try to keep this episode short and try to get it out on time. And two, because from here on in, I'm going to have to do a little bit of experimentation to try to figure out how I want to put the material on and still have it to where we can have like the snarl effects and the eyebrow effects and all that kind of stuff. Do a little bit more planning on what I want to do with the back of the head in regards to you know the the foam and where the rest of the neck lies all that other kind of stuff so i want to kind of toy around with that first and experiment before i actually start trying to apply that and film the episode so that will be on the next episode so from here i'm hoping that probably in two more episodes we might actually have this finished who knows but other than that i mean it is still a very good proof in concept it's still a work in progress as said but i am learning from this so as I just keep working on it, hopefully I just keep improving on it. So with that being said, I just want to say this is me building a Skeksis puppet controlled by cables. And I want to say thank you for watching and I will see you in the next episode.